can you believe it is already the seventh month um this year has just been flying by for me it has anyway but uh i'm glad to be here with you again and hope you will get something out of this uh, video and understand yah's seventh month um tonight i will share the three moedim that's festivals of the seventh month of yah this month is a little more complicated than uh, most months, so uh, I will share with you the order in which the Moedim fall, and will share the scriptures related to each. And if you still have questions after this video, you can ask them in the comment section below. I will try to answer any questions that you have uh, as, to the best of my ability. And uh, let's go ahead first and take a look at the calendar. And then we will read the scriptures and I'll explain uh, how the scriptures apply to these Moedim and this seventh month of Yah. Okay. Um, let's go back to the 29th of month number six. And... <clears throat> it is Shabbat. It is the final Shabbat in month number six. And it is the full moon as well. So the following day will be new moon day. And this will be month number seven coming up. Now that occurs on the pagan Gregorian calendar day of 10-17-2024. 10, and of course, if you see what is written on uh, the next day, day two, it says NMD, New Moon Day, is Yom Teruah. Okay, Yom Teruah is another way of saying uh, the Feast of Trumpets. And um, so that is what that day is. Don't be confused by the purple being on day two. Day two is not a festival. Day two is not a uh, one of the Moedim, day two is just explaining that, hey, look at day one, I don't have enough place to write that this is Yom Teruah. So, uh, and then day three, don't pay any attention to that, some old man's birthday. <laughs> okay, then we have the next Shabbat, which is the eighth day of the month, first day all the way to the eighth day, and then two days following, we have Day of Atonement. And now notice something, and you'll understand this in just, few just a few moments when we start going over this in the scriptures. This is the Day of Atonement. It's not the Night of Atonement. It's the Day of Atonement. And I'll explain that in detail when we get to the scriptures. Okay, then um, on the up and coming 15th, which is a regular Shabbat, uh, we have the beginning of Sukkot, which is uh, is uh, the where the Israelites stayed in makeshift houses, and that's they lived in booths when they came out of Egypt, and this is just a week long of remembering those booths, so they would. Uh, they would gather their materials and build their booth, put up their booth on the 15th. And for the next seven days, uh, the following seven days, including the 15th, uh, they would live in booths. And then, of course, the Sabbath occurs on the eighth day of this festival, which is the closing day of the festival. It really is seven days and then the closing day of the festival is on the 22nd, which is the uh, or second, third weekly Shabbat of the month. And then, of course, there's no more events until the final Shabbat of the seventh month, which is, occurs on the 29th day of the month. And the full moon also occurs on the 29th. And then the following day is the first day of Yah's eighth month so let's go ahead and go to the scriptures now and we'll take a look at the scriptures and 
we'll go over everything that uh, I need to go over with you there so you can ex um, you can understand these three Moedim and what they are all about. Okay, we're starting in chapter 23, verses 23 through 43. But before we read the scriptures, let's go and ask Abba for understanding and ask for his blessings upon what we study tonight together. Abba, Father, yeah, we so certainly appreciate all of the wonderful things you do for us day after day. Father, you protect us and you keep us safe from all harm. And you... you uh, bless us with all different kinds of blessings and father the people that you bring in contact with us are quality people that that love you and that you love them and and father there's a, such a blessing to us in each and every way we're thankful for how you take care of us uh, physically spiritually mentally emotionally in every way father we place our trust in you and you are an elohim who does not fail us and we love you for it, and we thank you for it. And we thank you for the precious blood of Yeshua, our Messiah, that he shed on Calvary to save wretches like us. And I pray, Father, that your blessing would be upon our understanding, that you'd help us to grasp your word and the details of your word and what it means to each and every one of us. All that we pray, we pray in the blessed name of Yeshua, Messiah. And the Mishpachah said, Amen, Amen. Okay. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have you have a rest, a remembrance, a blowing of trumpets, a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. Okay. And that, of course, is the Feast of Trumpets and Yom Teruah in the Hebrew. Okay. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, On the tenth day, Notice it says on the 10th day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a Kodesh gathering for you, and you shall afflict your beings and shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. And you do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before Yahuwah your Elohim. So let's get this right. It is not the night of atonement. It is not the evening of atonement. It is the day of atonement, which occurs on the 10th day. And we'll point something out in a moment when we get to the scripture that says something about the ninth day. For any being who is not afflicted on that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And any being who does any work on that same day shall be uh, that being I shall destroy from the midst of his people. You do no work, a law forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It is a Sabbath of rest to you, and you shall afflict your beings. Now listen to this. On the ninth day of the month, this is the day before the tenth, the day before the observation of uh of the Day of Atonement. Okay, on the ninth day of the month, at evening, from evening to evening, you observe your Sabbath. It's not saying that the Sabbath is in the evening, but he says on the evening, on the ninth day at evening. From evening to evening, you're going to observe this Sabbath. He says, start early and Imagine it's probably uh, sort of cross, uh, crossing paths with what happened when they left Egypt. They had to leave in a hurry, remember? Uh, that's why they had unleavened bread. is because they had to leave before they were le able to leaven their bread. They left in the night. So that's a reference, I think. And this, uh, this day is a day in the seventh month. That was a day in the 
first month. So uh, you'll find that uh, Yahweh is always corresponding and doing things again in a similar way as he's done them before. And Yah's like that. And it makes it easier for us to understand. And uh, sometimes we get a little bit confused, but there's always help. If you sincerely seek Yah, he will always help you. So they'll start observing the tenth day, which is the day of atonement, at evening, the day before. It's just like saying, Father, I'm coming to you in prayer tonight because tomorrow is an important day for me. Okay, now you understand. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the festival of booths for seven days to Yahweh. On the first day is a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. For seven days you bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Now it says seven days. But it says here about an eighth day. On the eighth day, there shall be a Kodesh gathering for you, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is a closing festival. You do no servile work. You've already had the seven days uh, that were appointed, and now this is the eighth day. It's a closing festival. It's not actually a part of the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Booths, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it is a closing festival, and it's also a Sabbath. So if it's a Sabbath, and it occurs on the 22nd, there's a Sabbath every 22nd. And it starts on the 15th, which is the Sabbath. And it's always a Sabbath on the 15th day of the month of Yah. Okay, these are the appointed times of Yahweh, which you proclaim as Kodesh gatherings to bring an offering made by fire to Yahweh, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a slaughtering and drink offerings as commanded for every day. Besides the Sabbaths of Yahweh and besides your gifts and besides all your vows and besides all your voluntary offerings for which, which you give to Yahweh on the 15th day, of the seventh month, when you gather in the fruit of the land, observe the festival of Yahweh for seven days. On the first day is a rest, and on the eighth day a rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day, and I'll point something out to you here, on the first day, the fruit of good trees. That's work. Branches of palm trees, that's work. Twigs of leafy trees, that's work. And willows of the stream, that's work. They're having to cut these things down, it's, it's work. And shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim for seven days. He said you shall do no servile work on the Sabbath day. But there are times when it is necessary to work on the Sabbath day. And it's okay if Yahweh tells you to work on the Sabbath day. But normally, and throughout the remainder of the year, the Sabbath day is always a day of rest. But this day, to start the 15th day of the seventh month festival, a Feast of Tabernacles, or Feast of Booths, however you want to call it, uh, they, they gathered all the materials to build their booths, and they built their booths. You build a house on the Sabbath day, it's a sin. But these uh, were com uh, commanded by Yah. And so it's okay when he says, I want you to do this. And they did this because they wanted to remember how that they were brought up out of the land of Egypt and how that Yah rescued them from the hands of the Egyptians and brought them out and had them live in booths. Now, those of you who try this celebration, who try to, to keep it you know, as close to what Israel kept it as possible, this is a week, and boy, it's hard you know, to go a week 
with no amenities and whatnot. And sometimes it's cold uh, during this festival. And we do it for only seven days. Israel did it for 40 years. So for seven days, we remember what they did for 40 years. And you shall observe it as a festival to Yahuwah for seven days in the year, a law forever in your generations. How long is forever? Don't say eternity because that would be incorrect. Forever is simply, if you look at the dictionary, it says forever. So for to a certain time, for a certain time. Forever would mean until the end of the age. And forever, in this case, would be until the end of the generations, which is followed by the judgment. Okay? So that's how long forever is. And, of course, there are times that forever, written in the scriptures, actually refers to eternity. Because eternity is also another age. It's just an age with no end. Okay. Okay, dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites dwell in booths so that your generations know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Well, praise Yah. And I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be with you once again. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you understood. And if there's anything that you don't understand, I just, you know, comment below. Or send me an email to this channel with Ken at yahoo.com and uh, I will try to help you in the best way possible. Okay? But uh, for now, shalom and take it away, Alan. I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword My hand destroys them you blew with your wind, the sea covered them They sank like lead in the mighty waters Who is 
like you Oh, Yahuwah Among the mighty ones Who is like you Great in Kodeshah Awesome in praises Working wonders You stretched out your right hand The earth swallowed them In your kindness You led the people Whom you have redeemed In your strength You guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. And dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them In the mountain of your inheritance In the place, O oh, Yahuwah Which you have made for your own dwelling The meek dash, O oh, Yahuwah Which your hands have prepared Yahuwah reigns forever And ever